they're always they're always thrilled to be uh, competing, aren't they? Uh, I mean, they they tend to signal that in in previous quarters. I think what they're trying to sort of uh, sort of talk about really is yes, all these new entrants are coming in, into the into the into the marketplace. We had Peacock launching. Uh, we had Disney Plus earlier in this year. Uh, Viacom CBS is revamping their service to be more streaming forward. There is a key difference there, right? Unlike these others, Netflix spends every penny on, on production and then some, right? There's, they're going to be cash flow negative next year. So despite the sort of the nice cash flow positive we had this quarter, last quarter, and, and most of this year, that's going to go back down next year. That's ultimately a positive if you're an investor, right? Because they are pumping all their money in. Disney, for all the money that it spends on, on sports rights and content, movie studio stuff, a lot of it doesn't end up on streaming right away. And it may never end up on, on their streaming service. So that's still sort of a, a bridge they haven't crossed, as well as other competitors. So once that starts happening, however, that's when Netflix really should start getting worried, because for all the money they're spending, these other guys actually are spending more on content overall. Kevin, I wanted to ask your perspective as a, as a shareholder. The 2.2 million net additions for subscribers, does that fall in line with what you were expecting as far as a moderating growth rate from what we saw during the height of the pandemic last quarter, are you, or are you disappointed? Well, you know, I, I think it's within the it's within the boundary. I mean, looking back at the last year, certain stocks, you know, Peloton, uh, Zoom, kind of came out of nowhere and got this huge updraft. But you just have to remember that Netflix was already kind of a monstrous success before all this happened. So the fact that people stayed home, uh, yeah, it helped them. But you know, this was already a story that was rolling, and it's kind of the law of large numbers. Netflix is big already. They they can't. Uh, no matter how many things go their way, they, they can't accelerate beyond a certain level. Bernie, is the content slate uh, strong enough going into the, the, the new year? And, uh, of course, it comes as they lose some of their legacy shows as well, like The Office. Yeah, so in the in the in the shareholder letter they mentioned again that the content slate should be more second half way than fiscal twenty one. Don't forget, yeah, as you mentioned, Parks and Rec in the office coming off the service too. And you know, we think it's really interesting as Kevin just mentioned Peloton here. I mean, Netflix's E V to sales multiple had gone from six times to about eight and a half times. Um, in revenue estimates, it only moved up a percent. Um, contrast that with someone like Peloton, where revenue estimates have moved up by 20 percent. So really, it's where these stocks are in the growth curve. And you know, we prefer a stock like Peloton um, that is still just really and using the, the Netflix playbook to disrupt the fitness industry. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.